ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience uh, waiting for me. And uh, I would like to talk about uh, Digital Twin, introduce what do we mean with Digital Twin, uh, why open source, and uh, let me start with this uh, statement that our new digital life will gravitate more and more around data, around context data describing what's happening around us, when, where, and why. And um, today we have the situation that this data are very much often in, uh, organized in silos, not accessible in closed systems. And uh, our mission at Fiverr is to break down these silos, make data available on platforms, and use them for smart solutions. So what is the approach? It is the approach to access data describing what's happening in the real world. So to capture this data, put it into a digital representation of the real world. And this is what we call the digital twin. And then use artificial intelligence, use big data analytics to analyze, monitor, and process this data to update the digital twin and then to provide information back to the real world or directly to actuate out of the digital twin into the real world. An autonomously driving car, for example, is nothing different than a car which is operated in the digital twin, in the digital world, but is driving in the real world from A to B. And to be able to do so, we created the Fiverr ecosystem, we created the Fiverr Foundation seven years ago, headquartered here in Berlin, and Fiverr is providing open source software, but not only open source software building blocks. Um, so that is very important to understand. Fiverr is not providing uh, a complete platform, a complete digital platform or a complete solution, but just building blocks, like Lego stones. Yeah, and this is the first deliverable, this um, above mentioned open source software building blocks. Second part is standard interfaces. Third part, standard data models. And especially these second and third elements are answering the question how to transfer data and which data to be transferred and which data to be um, exchanged. So we have here the standard interface, which is called next generation service interface, and the standard data models. And then we have different vertical solutions, but I will focus here today on the area of smart cities. And in the meantime, as Fiverr is a non-for-profit organization, we are not doing any commercial activities. These open source components are either used by the end users directly, by cities, by regions, if they have sufficient competence and capacity, or by IT companies, consulting companies, which are creating digital platforms and smart solutions out of this. And I will show you a few examples afterwards. So we have in the meantime on the Fiverr marketplace more than 250 different powered by Fiverr platforms, solutions up to trainings and services. And looking at the platforms, these digital platforms, which are very often the basis for digital solutions for smart cities, um, we have in the meantime 23 different partners who have created smart city platforms based on Fiverr technology. I myself, I'm coming from ATOS. It's an IT service company. It's called uh, Urban Data Platform. To pick some more, we have uh, NEC from Japan called Cloud City Operation Center. In the meantime, the first 30 cities in Japan are doing their digitization based on this. On the right, Amazon Web Services joined us, or uh, to name some German organizations like uh, DKSR, Datenkompetenzzentrum Städte und Regionen, urban, uh, Open Urban Data Platform, ADIX from Kiel, or, and I will use this a bit later, from Hypertegrity called Urban Data Space Platform. But the, these data spaces don't create real value. They're just collecting data providing data for smart solutions, and the, the real values are coming from smart solutions. And let me, let me give you a few examples. This is uh, the former mayor of uh, Eindhoven, a city in the Netherlands. 
my city one problematic street, and this street is called Stratum Signed. There it is. Um, one kilometer long, 55 bars, a lot of alcohol, high crime rate in the past. And what they did is to reduce this crime rate, they installed cameras, analyzing the moving patterns of the people, no face recognition. Now we have GDPR in Europe. Second is microphones, sound analytics, aggressivity level of the sound, loudness, where is it coming from? And third, social media analytics. And by combining all this data, describing what's happening in the street, the system is able to do a predictive service for the police. So the uh, police officer in the control room gets the right pictures in front of him or her and is now able to decide either to send proactively people there because he gets an alert within the next three minutes there's a probability of 80 percent that it will become critical in this point of the street or he or she is able to increase the level of light in that segment of the street. Philips is a partner of this project and um, it is proven that in 80% of the cases, it is sufficient to increase the level of light to de-escalate an upcoming critical situation. And it is proven that the crime rate has been reduced by more than 50%, that there are less damages in the bars, the police people are used more efficiently, there are less transportations to hospitals, and the image of the street and the city has been increased. Or another example, in this case from Montevideo, um, a city, the capital in, uh, in Uruguay, in South America. They installed Five Air already six years ago, have a full-blown smart city platform, a lot of applications. I'm showing here one. It's a flat, real-time warning system. So they installed a lot of sensors in the city, um, uh, connected floodgates, and so on standard business. What's really interesting is, on the next page, they used this sensor data and enhanced it by soil hydrological and metrological models, again enhancing it by information coming from citizen apps, from Facebook, from Twitter, so publicly posted information, and combining this information and creating a flood pre-warning system. Um, the, because they quite often have heavy rain situations in the backlands, which is causing flooding situations, as we can see it here on the top right, uh, within the city. And uh, the citizens have an app. Like Google, the app is able to uh, recognize where have I parked my car, and the citizens are getting a personalized alert. As an example, with 90%, there will be, within the next 30 minutes, half a meter of water at the place where you have parked your car. So it's not like uh, Nina, which we have here in, in Germany, uh, or cell broadcasting to everyone, but it's really a personalized uh, warning system for the citizens in Montevideo, in Uruguay. So that's what's happening based on Five Air in South America. But it's also used um, in Germany, in a lot of cities in Germany, the fiber technology, and also in the little village where I'm living. So I'm living in a village close to Paderborn in Northern Westphalia, a village is called Etteln, on the way to become a digital lighthouse village in Germany. And uh, we started five years ago with this approach. We have, uh, you see it on the top right, a digital village car, uh, an, ele an electric um, car which can be used free of charge by the citizens, like you know it here in, in Berlin, uh, car sharing, they can book it via smartphone, open it via smartphone, but it's free of charge. Same with the um, electric um, uh, cargo bike, and what we did is after we uh, deployed the, uh, and I, I think I have it on the next page, after we deployed the necessary infrastructure, so we have fiber to the home, even fiber to the last milk can all over in the village. We have a LoRaWAN network that's a um, yeah, mobile communication network. We have completely 5G. We are using also other technologies. 
And in the meantime, we have deployed a lot of sensors. I will come back to that. And we created a 3D digital twin of the village um, using a viewer from uh, virtual city systems you see over here. And I will show you some screenshots of this. So that's a village, 2,000 people, 600 houses. And um, this is not a picture, it's a point cloud. So we used a drone to create a, a textured point cloud of the village. And um, this is a bit closer. And we are able, within this 3D digital twin of the village, to show sensor data coming from the real world. Because the sensors are connected to the Fiverr platform, and the Fiverr platform is connected to the 3D digital twin. And uh, by simply this menu point here, you can activate showing sensor data. Or the citizens can click on the, uh, on the church and get the latest information from the church and uh, all other information from the city, uh, from the village. Uh, there's also um, the uh, city GML behind it. So you can also get uh, information which is publicly available, for example, in North Rhine-Westphalia or maybe all over Germany uh, regarding the houses and their information. And now I would like to come to another use case, which is in an area where, in a construction area where new houses are planned. So the first five have been built, and then the flood in the Ahrtal came, and all people got nervous. And uh, we have here the situation. Hmm. There. Um, this is from another view. Um, this new construction area is at the end of a side valley, which is normally dry. So no water, no real water problem. But, and now I have to, uh, I'm zooming a bit out. I have to switch back to uh, the level of detail two. So only this um, city GML um, boxes of the houses. And we see now um, putting in a simulation of a 50 years high water that the river is able to cover this. So um, no problem that from the river water is going there. But in the situation of a heavy rain situation, and heavy rain means 90 millimeters per hour, and that's this, all this simulation is also in this uh, 3D model. So we have yet, that's in German, Starkregen, extremes Ereignis. Then we have the situation that out of this dry valley, so much water is coming into this construction area that there is one meter of water. And now the responsible people in the city administration are getting nervous. Shall we continue to build houses there? And um, to support the decision process and also to make life for those houses which are actually built, you see them here, a bit safer. And uh, you see it here when, when zooming in. Uh, this is one meter of water there in the simulation. We have started to um, de deploy a lot of sensors. Ground level water, rain, river level, moist, uh, soil moisture, flow meter, and so on. And we would simply copy the solution I showed you before from Montevideo to Eteln. Because in the Fiverr ecosystem, all are using the same data models, the same interfaces, it's open source, and it can simply be transferred. And so we will create a flood pre-warning system for this little village. And this is one of the solutions. Another one is an autonomously flying drone for the fire brigade, and one dozen of other applications built on this digital platform in this village. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, uh, ah, uh, no. Let me finish, and I think we are getting, yeah, one minute. Um, Fiverr is, in the meantime, the globally leading open source technology for smart cities. So far more than 350 cities in uh, all over the world, in India, in Europe, in uh, Korea, 
in Japan and so on are creating their smart city based on Fiverr technology. We are a member-driven organization founded by four organizations seven years ago, and now we grew to more than 620 members from all over the world. And this should have been my last slide. 